Whenever I've taken my deep dives into the financial aspect of YouTube, I've come across a lot of videos that talk about how to make $100 a month of passive income with your portfolio. And believe me, I understand how significant of a milestone that $100 a month in dividends is. That's something I definitely want to hit much sooner than later. So with that motivation, I sat down in front of my computer and looked up the top five highest dividend yielding positions within my portfolio so I could see how long it would take me to make $100 a month in dividends from each of them if I were to invest my $30 a week only into those positions. But it was then that I noticed a problem and if it goes unnoticed by other investors, it could literally destroy your entire portfolio. But let's just start from the beginning. So first things first, out of all the positions I have in my portfolio, I want to figure out which position would pay me $100 a month in dividends first if I were to invest $30 a week into it. And to figure that out, I got to find out what dividend stocks or ETFs in my portfolio have the highest dividend yield. And once I did that, I discovered that my top five highest dividend yielding positions are Energy Transfer, Rhythm Capital, Delic Logistics, Altria, and to top it all off, QYLD, which has almost a 12% dividend yield, the highest that I have in any position in my portfolio. So out the gate, it's safe to assume that QILD is going to get me to $100 a month in dividends out of all the other investments that I have. If I invested $30 a week into all five positions, Rhythm and Energy Transfer would get me to $100 a month in eight years. Delic Logistics would get me there in about seven years. And Altria also would get me there in seven years. But QILD would get me there in six years. And that's really great because at that point, I would still be in my mid to almost late 30s. I'd have a cool $100 a month of passive income income coming in that I could use to pay some bills or maybe go out to dinner, have some drinks, or just do whatever. And this is the part where for a lot of people, the video should end. You know what you need to do with how much money you have, you know what the goal is and how long it'll take, so that's great. But here is the part where if you're not really thinking about the rest of the story, then you could legitimately destroy your entire portfolio. So when you were a kid, and you know what? Let me, let me get something real quick, one second. So when you were a kid, you probably did chores around the house so you can make a little bit of money, so you can buy things. And before you even knew what banks were or what interest is, you probably took all your change and you kept it into a cup like this. and. Over time, you'll do more chores and you'll get more money. And you just keep filling it up and you keep filling it up and you're not really realizing that over time, the amount of money you have in that cup is increasing, but you're over time seeing that the amount of change you have in that cup is growing and that feeling is really cool. But what if one day you go back to the cup after doing some chores, doing the dishes or something like that, and you realize that the amount of money that you have in that cup has decreased probably wouldn't make you feel good. Well, with investing in the stock market, especially in the long term, that's literally the same exact thing. The goal for many of us is to put our money in the stock market, let it stay in there for a given period of time, whether it's a couple of years, a couple of decades, or even longer than that, and then eventually take that money out in hopes that the amount of money you get is more than what you put in. And throughout that time, your money may be in positions that pay dividends, which is great, but over time, depending on what those positions are, it could have a long-term negative impact. Impact. And that's because of one thing that a lot of people that are chasing dividends may not actually consider, and that's the stock's price history. So with all that in mind, I look back at QILD, understanding that's going to give me $200 a month the fastest, but when I saw its five-year share price history, I noticed that it had decreased by 19%, which means it was a little under 4% decrease per year. That would mean over time, the money that I'm making in dividends would slowly get offset by the money I'm losing overall from the dropping of the share price. So with all that in mind, I look back at those positions again to see not only how much money I would end up with after one year of investing into it with the dividends, but also including how the stock price would be impacted based off its five year growth history. Looking back at Altria, just like QIOD, they also had a negative growth history, but it was about 14.5% over the past five years. Rhythm was probably the worst with a negative 32.7% growth, or in this case, decline within the same period of time. And the energy transfer, it honestly wasn't that bad in comparison to the other three stocks, but it still shows that it has dropped about negative 3.93, almost 4% over that same period of time. Now, Delic Logistics, on the other hand, was the only one in my top five with a positive growth history, sitting at almost 50% growth at over a five year span. So that's something interesting that I wanted to keep in mind. Now, with all that being said, 
going through this whole process again. If I were to invest a lump sum of $1,560 into all five positions, which is the equivalent of me investing $30 a week for 52 weeks, which is what I do now, this is what I would end up with when I consider how much I put in, plus how much I would get in dividends, and considering the stock price history. So by the end of the first year, QYLD would make me almost $1,750 when you include the dividends I would make, but then when you consider how much it would lose within a year, I would end up with almost $1,690. With Altria, I would go down from $1,713 when you consider the dividend to about $1,663. Rhythm, which had the steepest drop in overall price history within five years, would get me from $1,709 when we're just talking about the dividends I would make to $1,597. So that would definitely be the worst position to invest into. Angie transfer isn't so bad. I would end up going down to $1,692 within the first year. But Dell Logistics is the one position that would make me the most money. I would actually go from $1,709 with the dividends to $1,879 when you consider the overall growth. That means that Dell Logistics overall would be the best position for me to invest at $30 a week into for 52 weeks if I'm really concerned about not only how much money I'm gonna make in passive income and getting to that $100 a month goal, but also making sure my overall portfolio is going to give me the best returns I possibly can within a long period of time. With that in mind, I decided that I wanted to give myself a little bit of a challenge to see what this position will do for me as far as dividend payouts and stock price growth if I invest into it and only into it for the next eight to 12 weeks. Now, of course, if I sell stocks or ETFs or if I have dividends that pay me but I don't reinvest into those same stocks, I can do whatever I want with that money. But the $30 a week that I invest out of my own pocket, I plan on pulling it into Delic Logistics. And again, it'll be between eight to 12 weeks. And you know what, I guess I can decide that right now since I got all this change next to me. Of course, heads is eight, weeks, tails is 12 weeks, I'm a little nervous, but let's see what happens. Okay, eight weeks. So I'm gonna be investing into Delic Logistics, $30 a week for the next eight weeks, and hopefully I can make an update for you guys to actually show you how it's impacted my portfolio as far as growth and dividend payout. Just like you and many of you out there probably, I definitely wanna have a portfolio to where if I decide to pull money out, it's definitely a lot more money than it was when I put in. And I hope to also have a portfolio that over time can increase the value of passive income that I can make every single month. So I can do a lot of different things like pay bills for example. And even though I'm not making enough to pay bills and be on like a retirement mode right now. In this video, I actually talk about what bills I can actually pay at this point as of last year when I was investing only $25 a week and even leading up to now when I'm investing 30. So make sure you check this video out, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I appreciate you guys watching as always. And until next time, take care.